Tippy time my jammies, Topcat here and welcome back to the channel. Solar has been dominant this season with great perks in the artifact. But I honestly struggled with the hunter in here, so I won't be recommending it. The Titan the Warlock on the other hand shone with both great super damage, area of effect, and survivability. I'll be leaving links at the end of this video for my other elemental subclasses and there will be dim links in the description below for both of these. First up, Titan, and I'm using the Paragon Greaves. This boosts our shoulder charge damage whilst activated in the air. For a reference in this loss sector here, look at that little damage bar, that's a normal shoulder charge. Flip side with the Peregrines and all roared up, this is Death with Wings, he is gone burgers. Recently buffed when damaging mini bosses, tormentors or champions with our shoulder charge we are instantly refunded the melee energy used to do so. This exotic gets a major thumbs up because there is a metric shit ton of yellow bars inside Onslaught. The updated consecration may have your general air clear sorted but when a major slips through your defenses onto that ADU it needs to go down quick. The consecration I find needs more of a wind up and is not as good and energy efficient on solo targets. The Peregrines have superior directionality. The Hammer Strike leaves a wake of solo behind you on hits and automatically ignites on kills. So we've got a lot more uptime with this than the Consecration. Cleaning a lot more clocks while still scorching and we've got plenty of ignitions. To make this even stronger we use Roaring Flames. This adds to our damage once we stack ability kills 3 times. This pushes our damage up to a staggering 400,000. This has a 20 second timer for us to get another kill. And as our greaves don't use a charge against our yellow bars, it's even easier to stack and keep stacked. If there are no yellow bars around whilst you have your roaring flames up, non-charge melees continue to extend this pushing your timer back to 20 seconds. If you want to warm those flames up from afar, use your favourite grenade. I like Incendiary as it's got the highest direct amount of Scorch stacks, but both Thermite and Solar work well here too. We're using Ember of Eruptions to give our Shoulder Charge Eruptions a larger area of effect. Ember of Char is going to increase the amount of Scorch stacks thrown out, and Ember of Ashes are going to apply apply more scorch stacks to our targets. We need 100 stacks to ignite, so often by picking off a yellow bar, we'll clean up those spears. Searing is good for two reasons. Defeating scorch targets, we are granted melee energy, as with this powerful melee, I don't want to be saving it for yellow bars only. All of our foes deserve a good old knee check to the face. This also creates fire sprites to increase our grenade ability uptime. Sol Invictus makes us sunspots on ability kills, but this can also include weapons ignitions. These increase our ability regen when standing in them, so we can easily top that melee charge back up. Any foes that stand too close get scorched, and we get restoration to get healed. The Burning Maul is superior in terms of damage and was up time with a great cooldown, but without a tracking fragment, it might be a better option to go with the traditional hammer throw. This way I can destroy the targets that I want and not leave it up to fate like some bogus tarot reading. Either or really, they both have great damage that would chunk those fat fat yellows, bricks and tormentors. Our mod rotations are heavy handed to give us orbs of power on our melee kills. This does have a 10 second cooldown on it though. These orbs will charge our melee kickstarter mod to instantly net us back melee energy when killing those rank and files. I also like one to finish her for when I'm in the trenches just brawling it out. Those orbs feed us invigorations melee energy cooldown and recuperation to heal us immediately when I don't have time to double back to those sunspots for its restoration. And with stacks on stacks, this armor charge will charge twice to make our kickstarters work good and proper. 
I'm a big fan of Intelli Kindness with this build. The Kindness will be one bang in those red bars, and it's great against those champs, both Fallen and Hive. I was running the double GL. Salvation's Grip has great damage against bosses, mages, and miners with the utility to stop marauders in their tracks. Once they're all frozen, I can safely pick my target, and those sunspots at ignition shatter all the remaining crystals for some super fun AoE damage. You can also use your favorite Breach Load GL in the kinetic slot to save you on your heavy ammo. Iron Banner's Tusk of the Boar worked really well here, being a waveframe. And in the artifact, I'm using both the Strand Trinity and the Stasis Trinity mods, so I can utilize three AoEs to counter those hordes as I pick my next victim of my Shin Scythes. There is a dim link in the description below, or feel free to pause here for all my mods, artifact layout, and armor stats. Up next, we have the Warlock and we are using the Dawn Chorus. With its perk, Rites of Ember, our Daybreak projectiles deal increased damage and deal massive amounts of Scorch. This gives us the second highest solid damage super, sitting at only 40k shy of first with 770,000. DPS doesn't matter as much in Onslaught as just outright damage, so in here these long burn supers are a lot better compared to our one and dones. And because it's not one and done, this allows me to duel multiple targets at once with that tremendous damage output. But this helmet just doesn't stop at the super. It improves Scorch all around. This means our abilities and our weapon ignitions too. And this returns us melee energy whenever we Scorch a target. We've got a lot of popular weapons that can apply Scorch and cause Ignitions. Sunshot is undoubtedly the people's favourite. I'm personally more partial to the Tommy's Matchbook myself as I can cause Ignitions directly. But these are completely interchangeable depending on if you're facing an Unstop or an Overload. The Skyburners is a good swap to if you need to play back at those higher levels and in boss encounters. Conditional makes a lot of big booms and can stop enemies in their tracks. Both Dragon's Breath and the 1000 Voices spew out tons of lava. But be careful with the 1k when facing the Fallen, as those Marauders can get right up in your grill without you knowing. It won't be egg on your face when you nick yourself, it'll be 1k. I highly recommend using Heat Rises. Even if you don't like the Skyborn superiority that it affords you, it works really good at feeding you back melee energy whilst airborne. So whenever you melee, all you need to do is just a little bunny hop, flick of the wrist, and you'll get rewarded. But try it. By consuming our grenade energy, we create a burst of healing energy that cures nearby allies. And the strength of this effect is larger when using your healing grenade. We come back to Earth with the Phoenix Dive, so we can gain restoration whilst diving, and heal allies, and Scorch targets upon landing. Pair this with the Finger Snap, and our Scorch combo is set for easy ignitions. This melee spreads more Scorch. With Ember of Singeing, our Phoenix Dive charges faster when we Scorch. With Searing, defeating Scorch targets gives us melee energy, and creates fire sprites to give us grenade energy. Ashes will apply more Scorch stacks to increase both of these effects, and more Scorch makes us more Boom Booms. This build is a great all-rounder build, working both in tandem between abilities and weapon kills. So Ember of Imperium is going to loop our restoration so we can stay in that battle longer. Our Radiance will also chain off the back of both our weapons and ability kills, but we're relying on the solar perks in the artifact to get us it. I like the Icarus Dash as whilst airborne you want that functionality to avoid those Ogre Blasts, as they will hurt just about as much as that first breakup. When we have Heat Rises active, this also will give us a second dodge. And when we get weapon kills, we get cure, making us extremely durable in those battles. Our mod tree utilizes the utility kickstart, 
as it's the most important ability to get us out of danger fast. Our Phoenix Dive will chain our melee and grenade cooldowns with both Bomber and Outreach. On my Gauntlets, Focusing Strike boosts Phoenix Dive when I melee, and Impact Induction boosts Grenade cooldown when I melee. I pick up my Fire Sprite for some Grenade Energy, and with Elemental Charge, I get an Armor Charge so I can loot back for my Utility Kickstarter. Pause here for a full list of my mods, the Artifact Tree and my stat layout, but there will be a dim link in the description below. Again apologies, I've got no Hunter build for you today, I could not find one worth recommending to you. But I would love to hear from you about yours in the comments down below if you got one that you've had success with. Both of these builds worked really great in here. The Titan is a brute cutting through the air, so too is the Warlock. Less Eagle, more Vulture, but its dance in the air is fun, like some macabre ballet of death. Make sure to thumb it if you dug it, sub if you're new, and as always, tippy tie my damies, what a tie.